Hello option traders and welcome to a mini trading tutorial from OptionsAtoZ.com, the website dedicated to teaching investors the art and science of options trading. In this video we're going to show you how to use the TOS Index Watch feature in the Thinkorswim platform. What exactly is the TOS Index Watch? Well the TOS Index Watch tab allows users to quickly see the percentage change in stock prices for a particular group or index. The list may be personal, that is ones you have created, public, such as for the Dow or the S&P 500, top 10 lists, maybe you want to see the top 10 percentage gainers from the NYSE or the NASDAQ, or by a particular industry. Let's go to the Thinkorswim platform and see how to use the Index Watch. To find the TOS Index Watch tab, you'll need to click on the Market Watch tab here at the top. But first, let me collapse this left sidebar here to make the screen a little fuller. It will just make it easier for you to follow with the presentation. And once you click on Market Watch, you will find four submenus. You'll see Quote, Alerts, Watch, and Rollover Rates. And right here on this Watch tab, click there, and you're going to find a series of submenus. But the one I want to show you today is here at the top, TOS index watch. To activate it you'll need to click the blue arrow here to the left. To begin you'll want to start with this box here that is highlighted here that says select watch list. Click in the box anywhere there and you'll get a pop-up menu that actually appears in many areas in the Thinkorswim platform. This just contains all of the lists that are available to us in Thinkorswim. The top one right here says personal and these are lists that we can create. The public list here are all coded directly from Thinkorswim. You cannot add to the list and you cannot delete it. But they contain many types of indexes. Got the S&P 100, S&P 500 down here at the bottom. Got the Dow. You've got some ETFs, exchange traded funds, futures, forex, number of different things that we can watch from the public list. Down below public is top 10. And this is just what you would expect it to be. Top 10 percentage gainers, losers, most actives in terms of volume and we also have top 10 sizzling stocks. I do have a video in YouTube talking about sizzling stocks for those who may not be familiar with that. And then finally down below we have industry. This allows us to search for groups of stocks according to particular industries. Let's say that we want to see how the Dow is performing today. Let's scroll back up here to public and in this flyout menu to the right we're going to come down here to Dow. Left mouse click there. And what you're seeing here is what's called a heat map. A heat map is just a graphical representation according to colors. It just makes it a little easier for the eye to follow. If you look at the left hand scale here you'll see that it is in percentage terms. So that allows us to make equal comparisons across many different priced stocks. So what exactly are these bars that we're looking at here? Well, all of the green bars represent stocks in the Dow that are currently up. The red bars show particular stocks that are currently down. And as you've guessed, there are 30 little columns in here to show the 30 different stocks in the Dow. So just visually, I can see, let's say, this stock right here, this large green bar, is the best performing stock right now in the Dow. If I want to know what it is, I just hover in this column, and you'll see here on the top, and on the bottom, it is giving us the ticker symbol, INTC. And if you don't happen to know what that ticker is, if you look down below, it tells us that it is Intel Corporation, along with a lot of other statistics, such as the last net change, percent change, bid ask, high, low, and volume. So very quickly, I can see that Intel is getting close to 3% up for the day. If I want to see the specifics, I can just refer to the box on the bottom. I see it's trading for $20.46, up just over $0.55. Cents. And the percentage change right here is showing is it's 2.76%. If I want to see who is performing the worst, I look for the red bar that is the lowest, that is below zero or negative. And over here, that happens to be AXP, and that is American Express. It's down somewhere around a percent and a half right here. I can see that visually on the bar. If I want to see exactly, I look to my box on the right and it's trading for 3801 down about a percent and a half. If you look closely at this bar, you'll see that it is actually moving. Let's see if we can get it to move here in just a second. 
And that's because the markets are currently open. So this line right here, the very bottom of this bar, is the current percentage change for American Express. And if the markets were closed, that would be the closing price. But look closely inside this column here for American Express. If you look way down here to the bottom, you'll see a red hash mark, and that is the lowest trade for today. Up on the top, you'll see a green hash mark. That was the highest trade. So I can see that at one time today, American Express was positive, and that's because this green hash mark here is above zero. Let's find another stock where that is not true. Let's see, here's a good one, Caterpillar. Take a close look here. Caterpillar, I can see, is up for the day, just over 2%. The high trade was way up here. It was up almost 3.5%. But notice right here, the red hash mark is inside the green bar. The red hash mark, if we look to the left, is plus 1%. That tells me that the low trade, and I know that's the low trade because it is a red hash mark, was still positive. So the lowest that Caterpillar was up today was positive 1%. So just remember when you're looking at these little hash marks here, red does not necessarily mean negative. It just means that was the low trade for today. Whether it was positive or negative, we need to look at the scale on the left. I also have another box, if you look down here in the lower left-hand corner, that is an alphabetical listing of all of the ticker symbols in the Dow. And we can see them numbered here 1 through 30. This is just a different way to reference the stocks in this upper chart here in our heat map. So, for instance, let's say that I want to find J.P. Morgan. Well, rather than scrolling through each of these, and these are in alphabetical order, by the way, but it might just take me a while to hunt through here to find J.P.M. But if I look at the box down here on the left, I can quickly see J.P.M., number 16 here, and if I hover over this ticker here, it automatically highlights it in the heat map up above. So you can see that I'm pointing to J.P.M. here in the lower box, and Thinkorswim has located it in the heat map in the upper graph. Thinkorswim also allows you to change the look of this graph somewhat by clicking in this box in the upper left here that says Show Arrows. If I left mouse click in that box there, what it does is it's just showing in terms of arrows. The green arrows are showing up, red arrows are pointing down, the hash marks still have the same interpretation, but the flat portion of these triangles, such as right here on JP Morgan, is actually the high part of that bar. So it's just a little different way. Some people find it easier to figure out how many stocks are actually up or down without looking at the bars. So just be aware that it's a little different layout. If I click back here on Show Bars, then it takes me right back to the Bars menu. If I want to get a quick count, I can do that in the upper right. If you look here, where it says Advancing, Declining, and Optionable. Right here it tells us there are 25 issues that are advancing and therefore there must be five that are declining. The term optionable right here tells us that of all of the stocks in this list, or of all of these 30 stocks in the Dow, that all 30 of them are optionable, and that just simply means that options are traded on them. To the right we have volume, in other words, of all of the advancing issues, getting close to 709 million shares traded, of the declining issues, just over 47 million, and out of all of the optionable stocks, which of course in this case will be the advancing plus the declining, since they are all optionable, getting over 756 million shares traded. Market capitalization is in this cell right here. And if you're seeing in your platform where you've got these trailing dots, it just means it's not fitting all of the numbers in there. If I hover over it, the number will actually appear. But I can also adjust that. If I scroll up here with my mouse until I get a double-headed arrow, I can expand and contract these boxes a little bit. Got issues, volume, capitalization, and on the far right I have the put-call ratio. I will not have time to talk about what that is in this video, but for those who follow the put-call ratio, this is where you will find it in Thinkorswim. So that's really the essence of the TOS Index Watch. If you are interested in advanced training on the Thinkorswim platform, please visit optionsa-z.com. I have five-week Thinkorswim training classes where I'll show you how to use the system and, more importantly, why you would select one type of order or feature over another. If you have questions, please email bill at optionsa-z.com. 
I hope you've enjoyed the video and now understand how to use the TOS Index Watch.